Robert, will you please stop? If I give you another bar of chocolate, will you stop then? Perhaps. Careful! Be careful! <laughs> an empty compartment in the next car. Robert! Robert! Please come with me. We are at the end. Please, madame. You just come with me now. Please. Yes. 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 Would you move? You can see the ladies in distress. Uh, thank you. Thank you, please. Thank you. Really? Such lack of feeling. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I, uh, I wrote to you last week, Madame uh, Robert, Julia Robert. A small room at the back. Yes, thank you. There is some confusion. Your papers identify you as Madame Michel Wolf Pilgrim. There need be no confusion. I am Madame Pilgrim, but uh, for the moment I would prefer to be known as uh, Madame uh, Robert. Of course.
no? Operator, get me litre 2042, please. Certainly, madame. I don't know. Nobody answers. Hello. Hello. Oh, for goodness sake, hang up. everybody tonight. With Daladier and Chamberlain in Munich, everyone is glued to the wireless. Who is that attractive young man? He's a professional. Do you think I could play with him? Sure. Good evening. Good evening. Would you be interested in uh, two or three quick games? I play for money, madam. Yes. 30 francs a game? I feel it only fair to tell you I'm quite a good player. All right, 20 francs. Good. A lightning game? If you like. Five second limits on moves? <laughs> ten seconds. All right, ten seconds. Left. Right, you have the advantage. Are you about to suggest that we revert to 30 francs? Yes. All right, start friends it is. Oh, excuse me. All right. Three games, 90 francs. Uh, I'm sorry, two fifties are the smallest I have. Do you have ten francs? No, madam, not even one. <laughs> How lucky I dropped in tonight. Shall we ask Paul for change? No, then he would know we were playing for money, and that would embarrass him. Uh, he would be embarrassed. I would not. We could get changed at the cafe down the street. Would you like some coffee? I'll invite you. <laughs> Good evening, Paul. Good night, Dr. Wolf. Good night. Monsieur Daladier and Mr. Chamberlain, the French and British premiers, arrived at Munich at the scheduled hour and were met at the airport by Herr von Rivenstock. I will ask you the inevitable question. Do you think there will be war? If there is, Germany will lose. What makes us so sure? Can you name one really outstanding German chess player? <laughs> How long have you been in Paris? Long enough to be hungry. Stanislas. Stanislas Pilgrim. You're not French, are you? I'm Polish. What is your Christian name? Michel. What sort of doctor are you? Medicine. X-ray. You earn a lot of money? I suppose so. Does that impress you? It doesn't impress me. It fills me with envy. 
Do you care so much about money? I care only about chess. I've promised myself, before I'm 30, I will be named International Master. Before 35, Grand Master. Worrying where my next month's rent is coming from, my next meal, my next pair of shoes, spoils my game. I want my own apartment, a house in the country, a convertible. I want to play chess at ease, my mind on nothing else. Please, don't make me feel guilty. I have an apartment, a house in the country, and a car. I'm sorry to say it's not convertible. What is? The car. I'll drive you home if you like. I accept. It's chilly and I have no top coat. Will you come up for a drink? Such a simple question deserves a simple answer, yes? Light, light, light. Oh. <laughs> I told you women should never <laughs> drive. Thank you. I'll have a light in a minute. The tenant before me had the current turned off. I haven't bothered to have it turned on. <laughs> Very wise of you. This room was made for candlelight. <laughs> My one and only chair. Oh, thank you. Shall we take turns? <laughs> Don't bother. There are no cigarettes. Doesn't matter. I have some. And that book is my complete library. <laughs> Aren't you a little late getting to the Brothers Karamasu? I read it for the first time when I was 15. I've never really stopped reading it. Tonight, for instance, just before I left for the club. Mm -hmm. You remember that scene between old man Karamazov and his sons? Well, there are hundreds of scenes in the book. I have forgotten them all. The old lecher is speaking to Alyosha. Alyosha? Wasn't he sort of the saintly one? Yes. And, and to Ivan, the intellectual, the cynic. Speak all the same. Is there a God or not? No, there is no God. Ivan, is there immortality of some sort? Just a little, just a tiny bit. There is no immortality either. None at all. None at all. There is absolute nothingness then. Good Lord, to think what faith man has lavished for nothing on that dream. And for how many thousand years? Who is it laughing at man, Ivan? It must be the devil. Ivan said, smile. And the devil? Does he exist? No. There is no devil either. Wasn't it Ivan who said, uh, <laughs> well, something like, um, if there is no God, no immortality, no heaven, no hell, no reward, no punishment, then everything is promiscuous. Yes. Something very much like that. Larceny, etchery, murder. Even the fleecing of unsuspecting women at chess <laughs> What was your first name again? Michel. I'll call you Misha. Mm -hmm. Are you married? Widow. For a good many years. Sorry. Any children? A stepdaughter. She's 11 now. I never. I never felt like a wife. I'm sorry to say, I never felt like a mother. My parents took care of Fabienne until they died. Since then, she's been going from one English boarding school to another. Oh, I see her now and then in transit. You offered me a drink, didn't you? Yes, and you shall have it. <laughs> With the compliments of the house. Oh, thank you. Mm. Well, it's lukewarm and it smells of disinfectant. Otherwise, it's delicious. It's good. <laughs> oh. hey. Why don't you shut up your cat like that? So as not to risk losing him, it's the fattest one I ever caught. Do you really love cats? It's not a question of loving them. I think the time has come when it will be difficult for me to live without him. 
What? I'm afraid it's true. Speciality of the house. <laughs> Fortunately, your 90 francs grants him a reprieve. You have made a correct diagnosis. You may tell your patient an operation won't be necessary. I'm almost afraid that she was so much looking forward to it. <laughs> There's a telephone call for you, Dr. Sanremo. Thank you. Transfer it to this phone and then you may leave. Thank you. Good night. Good night. It's done. It can't be. He would want you to pay for the call. Oh, he's practically self-supporting now. The Chess Federation is paying his expenses. You forget that he's highly thought of in the world of chess. In the world of chess and in the boudoir. In every other human habitat, he's a louse, and you know it. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, darling. Right. I'm fine, thank you. What? I do, I do. Oh, oh, how marvelous. Wait, hold on, I want to tell Charles. Stan Drew with Fedorovich. Thrilling. Charles is thrilled. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, I'm very happy for you, darling. When are you coming back? Tuesday. What time? Yes, yes, I will meet you. Uh, darling, I want you. Oh, oh, you have to. Oh, uh, goodbye, darling. Yes. Oh, Stan doesn't want to go on about his triumphs. Oh, not at 50 francs a minute. Well, it's international master Stanislas Pilgrim now. You know, it was less than a year ago Stan said to me, when I'm 30, I will be named international master. This, uh, this international business, will that mean more money for him? Oh, there will never be enough money for Stan. I'm afraid he'll never leave you. You won't have to worry. Shall I tell you something, Charles? Hmm? I think Stan has come to love me. My poor Michel, no. <laughs> You'll come and have dinner with me. My poor Charles, yes. Oh, good. But won't it be a novelty for you not picking up the check? <laughs> Stan? Yes? Look, I had a brooch made out of the cat you gave me. Oh, lovely. Oh. Would you like to know what I'm thinking? Not really. I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm thinking about your love making. Oh? Are you working up to a complaint? <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> it's just that uh, you used to give to it all the ceremony, all the concentration you gave the chest. In fact, I had the feeling sometimes that you planned several moves in advance. Hmm? And now? Now, I detect a little less uh, whipping. A little less uh, I hate the word detect. You make it sound as if our whole relationship has been under one of your X-ray machines. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, I saw the new Renault yesterday. Mm -hmm. Looked good. How expensive is it? I can't afford it. You can. Oh, thank you. I already have a car. I haven't. That's sad. But then Paris has more taxes than any city in the world. I didn't ask you to buy it for me. Don't you think I find it humiliating the way you dole out your money to me? Well, my patients dole it out to me, so I dole it out to you. I enjoy it, so should you. Hello. Oh, hello, Charles. No, we haven't been listening to the radio. <laughs> I'm afraid we had a very late night. <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, that's horrible. Yes, I understand, of course. Goodbye. Well, it's happened. Hitler has invaded Poland. England and France have declared war. I said there wouldn't be a war, so of course it was inevitable. Damn. You know what this war means? Of course I know what this war means. No, you don't. It means the end of the European tournament. No honor, no fame, no money. I will be dependent upon you even for my food. Mm -hmm. 
Will you support me, darling? Oh, oh. Would it ease your conscience if you were married? No, thank you. I'm not a dog. I can only wag my tail when I'm free. Thank you. It was something so beautifully put. There is really just no answer. Where are you going? To the club. Thank heaven. I thought perhaps you were marching off to war. Not without you, darling. They're getting closer. Who is it this time? The three times. Well, they stayed a little bit too long, didn't they? And you, you idiot, you stayed too. I know, I know. I have been thinking about it, but each time I make up my mind, in comes a new patient and I get so absorbed. I'm afraid I've got bad news too. A meeting was called by the Nazi Commissioner for Jewish Affairs. You are denied all facilities of the hospital. I'm going to resign, of course. Fortunately, I belong to nothing I can resign from. This is only the first I'm step. I'm worried about Stan, living with a Jewish woman. Oh, please, don't start that again. I'm not leaving you. I won't leave you. I will never leave you. And what is more, I, I want you to marry me. Marry you? Do I have to put it in writing? No, no, that won't be necessary. I have a witness. I'd be happier if you asked me to marry you because you love me, not because you hated the Nazis. We have been together so long now. Why haven't you asked me before? Because then I would have been conforming. Now I'm defying. What a horrible cold day for a wedding. Well, how do you feel? So far the same. I have a new name, but... Madame Wolf? I'm afraid there's a mistake. This is my wife, Madame Pilgrim. You'll come with us. Stand up! Stand! You don't recognize me. Should I? Yes, we are very old friends. I'm terribly sorry, but... Uh... Charles, I'm Michelle. Everybody thought so. Oh, Charles, I'm alive. <laughs> Technically, that is. It doesn't seem possible. The last camps were liberated ages ago. Where have you been? I have been, how should I say it, resting in an observation sanatorium in the Black Forest. <sighs> when did you get back? This evening. Come, let me take you inside. No, no, no. I don't want anyone to see me. Anyone at all. All right. Why didn't Stan tell me you were at the sanatorium? Because he didn't know. Well, didn't you get in touch with him? He doesn't even know I'm back in Paris yet. I don't understand. Charles, am I the person he knew? You will be. Not till I am completely will I show myself to Stan. You know Stan. Was he in love with me when he married me? No. And if he saw me now. I see you now. I feel no differently. I'm asking about Stan. Your eyes are as lovely as they always were. <laughs> I remember Stan telling me one night, a man should always 
marry a woman with beautiful eyes. That way there is always something to love, whatever happens. Tell me about Fanny. Last time I saw her, she was all arms and legs, braces on her teeth, and worst of all, no bosom. All deficiencies have been corrected. Is she in love? Tell me. You know, this is the most interest you've ever shown in Fanny. I know. Concentration camp at Dachau did one thing for me. It made me a Jew and a mother. I, I had almost forgotten I was Jewish. Then I was reminded of the fact very harshly. I saw too many mothers and daughters being torn from each other. There is something about my life in the camp. I swore I'd never tell a soul. So I... <laughs> I'll begin by telling you. There was a building in the camp. The house of pleasure. They locked you up there? No. I volunteered. I mean, the women inside there had almost enough to eat. And I wanted to see Stan again. If I hadn't loved him so much, I would have had less nerve, and I would have died of starvation. I'm afraid I'm going to do something in the middle of Paris I didn't do all those years in the camp. I must say, Michelle, you are beginning to look like yourself again. Julia Rovere. What else did you wriggle out of the concierge? Well, you didn't seem to know very much. She pays her rent regularly. Oh, and up until a week ago, she had all her meals in her room. <laughs> no, Fabi. It wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. Well, if you saw her. You know they say that somewhere in the world there are two people who are almost identical? I tell you, the likeness is uncanny. I don't care how much she looked like your stepmother did. It wouldn't work. Nobody would believe it. It's too fantastic. It will work only because it is fantastic. You think for one minute that somebody like Charles... Stan! Please let me finish. You think somebody like Charles, who was so close to her, would believe for one minute... Look, Stan, will you just go and see her? That's all I ask you. Just go and have a look at her. All right. That makes you any happier. I couldn't have thought of a scheme like that. It must be wonderful to be so young and so evil. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how evil.
on this one so yes I like it, Harry, but she's right. Stan doesn't know me. He doesn't know who I am. If her hair was blonde and I didn't know Michelle was dead, Swear. Can I have you? Please get me Dr. Brevard at the hospital valley. I don't want to be disturbed. Madame Robert, may I come in? Please, I must see you just for a moment. Forgive me, my name is Stanislas Pilgrim. I saw you in the dining room. The concierge gave me your name. I don't know if I can explain it. The shock, I... I thought for one moment I, I was living with my wife. My wife was deported in 1914. She never returned. She's dead. But when I saw you sitting there, I thought it's crazy. And I felt I must see you again. I'm sorry about your wife. You uh, loved her very much? <laughs> there are so many ways of loving. I was fond of her. We were married a very short time, and I owed her a great deal. Your wife, you say, died? Yes, she was a doctor, you know. She was Jewish. So you married a Jew? during the Nazi occupation. I hadn't been in the army. I was not a member of the resistance. I suppose that was my one exhibition of gallantry. Well, you have been very kind. I'm glad I gave in to my sudden impulse. Thank you for your patience. I've imposed upon you long enough. Good night, Madame Robert. Good night, Monsieur... Pilgrim. Stanislas Pilgrim. Me the guts. A chance like this will never come again. Now you've seen her close to you, know as well as I do. It will work. And you said yourself her voice could pass for Michelle's. Yes, but what guarantee do we have that she won't hear me out and then promptly call the police? Look, she may call you a few harsh names, but she won't call the police. All right, assume that I've charmed her, moved her to tears even. So, why should she risk her neck? The money. Because she doesn't need any money. You're right, so she has a little more money. She wants some more. Who doesn't? Will you please get on the telephone now? All right. If they haven't already cut it up. The day is wasted. She may have moved by now, and then where are we? Look, if she's left the hotel, we'll never find her again. Yes, uh, Madame Robert, please. Yes. Hello? Hello? Is that Madame Robert? Yes, it is. You remember me? Yes, yes. Madame Robert. Uh, since our little talk the other day, I have been thinking, uh, thinking, could we have a quiet drink someplace? Are we going to discuss your wife and how much I look like her? No. I want to talk to you about her daughter. I don't think you mentioned the daughter. Yes, my stepdaughter. Very beautiful and very unfortunate. A 
That's what I want to talk to you about. It's quite serious. I mean the situation Mademoiselle Wolf finds herself in. I don't understand. Does it concern me in some way? Uh, yes, I think it could be of tremendous help to Mademoiselle Wolf. In what way? That, uh, I would prefer not to discuss over the telephone. No, a quiet train someplace. Where do you suggest? My room? At the hotel? That would be ideal. If that wouldn't inconvenience you, I can be there in, um, 50 minutes? <laughs> Shall we set our watches? <laughs> Thank you very much, Madame Robert. I'll be right there. Thank you. What I'm about to propose to you is bizarre, grotesque, but I'm sure you will understand it. Because of your likeness to my wife, there's a great injustice you can help correct and incidentally benefit yourself. My wife died rich, although she never knew that. Her whole family, all her relatives, they were exterminated. I know it's horrible. Everything they owned, and collectively it's enormous, went to Michelle. But unfortunately, we were married under the regime of separate maintenance. So all the property goes to her stepdaughter, Fabienne. Or rather, it should go to Fabienne. There's trouble about the money. <laughs> Isn't there always? Yes. A barbaric, archaic law in France about property goes back to Napoleon, says that a person whose remains are not identified is not considered dead, but absent. If the remains were not identified, can you be absolutely sure? We are sure. Can you see any reason for her not returning except death? She is dead. But still there is this law, this technicality. Imagine a fabulous sum blocked for 30 years. Go on. A large capital within arm's reach without being able to touch it. It's madness, don't you agree? And what's more, we have to keep up a house. Her house. It's very expensive. We cannot afford it and we cannot sell it. Please, Madame Robert. You must help us. If you would agree to pass for my wife for a short while, a comparatively short while, believe me, your resemblance is really startling. As startling as your proposal. You know, there are 300 million francs involved. That sum takes my breath away. But uh, there are others who will have to be convinced. What about uh, all the papers that will have to be signed? Well, you will have to learn to copy her handwriting, of course. Forgery? Which is worse, forgery or depriving rightful heirs of a fortune because of a stupid technicality? Well, that's not a fair question. You may get 300 million francs. I, 30 years in prison. Oh, come on, not 30 years. Believe me, it will never come to that. But there are so many things about Madame Hilding I would have to know, aren't there? That will be up to me. Was I intelligent? Very. Thank you. Sensual? I found you so. Oh, another thing to remember. She, in a sense, bought me, and everybody knew it. I'm afraid, Mr. Pilgrim, I'm not the woman for you. I'm not too intelligent. I'm only moderately sensual. I know nothing of medicine. Oh, really, Madame Robert, the whole thing will be over quickly. Once your identity is established, you can discreetly disappear. Or, or even better, suicide. Why leave loose ends? Oh, please, Madame Robert, this is not a time for joking. Mademoiselle Wolf and I are prepared to offer you... Half? Huh? Well, not quite. <laughs> At least there are three of us. A third? Uh, no, we were thinking more along the line of 10%. <laughs> well, one can always readjust one's thinking, can't one? All right. 30%. Now, what do you say? Yes, I suggest. <laughs> are you mad? Why didn't you say to him straight off, you damn fool, I'm Michelle? Because I was revolted, curious, shocked, even thrilled, all at the same time. What was he up to? How far was he going? And you want to go through with this now? But why? Because I am revolted, curious, shocked, even thrilled. Oh, be serious, please. He said things to me. Things I can never forgive. And then, he was charming enough to inform me that everyone knew you had brought it. Well, you did, didn't you? Charles, I came to you for advice, not the truth. Listen, 
How long do you think you can keep him from knowing? Long enough to shake him up a little. I keep telling you, you have to be careful about the T's. Michelle never quite crossed her T's. A quick, hurried stroke that just missed. See? Yes, yes, I see. Try copying the next sentence. I don't want anyone to see us together. Sam! What are you doing here? I should have telephoned first, but I didn't think of it. I didn't think of a lot of things. Madame Rovere, I'm Fabian Wolf. What have I done to deserve such a beautiful daughter? Ugh, I hate my looks. Or anything very much about me. Oh, well, I know that feeling. Nevertheless, you are beautiful. Oh, I've forgotten my cigarette. Oh. Please. Thank you. I like to light my own. I make you uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable situation. I'm sorry. I am uncomfortable, too. You have to do better than that. My mother, they tell me, had poise. Unshakable poise at all times. But tell me, isn't it uh, important for me to know the relationship between Michelle and her stepdaughter? You and Michelle were not on good terms? Not on good terms, not on bad terms. Not on any terms at all, really. Did you hate her? No. You have to know people to hate them, and Michelle never paid enough attention to me for me to hate her. She gave me less than nothing. How long are you and Madame Rivere going to work today? I don't know. We're going to have a chess session. Will you be home for dinner? I don't know. Will you? I don't know. Vagueness runs in the family. I'm going to go to the cinema. It's a marvelous western on at Normandy. It's one of those where hardly anyone's alive at the end. I love those. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye. Bobby. <laughs> Not the best adjusted young girl you have met, is she? I think Michelle has much to reproach herself for. Still, she's quite brilliant. This impersonation was her idea, you know. Oh, I've forgotten. Yesterday, she said, you must have numbers tattooed on the forearm. You know, everyone who came back had them. Oh, it's quite all right. I thought of it before she did. The way she was looking at me, I swear to you, for one chilling, terrifying moment, I really believed it was Michelle. Be sensible. A woman at the top of her profession, a beautiful woman, handsome husband. She survived a concentration camp. Does she rush back to her husband, her work, her home? No, she hides out in some shabby hotel off a side street in Paris. Is this Michelle? I know it's absurd. But seeing those numbers shook you, it would have shaken me too. Well, this woman is getting 100 million francs if things work out. And we've drummed into her that not one tiny aspect must be overlooked. She's an intelligent woman. Why shouldn't she do a little thinking herself? All right, all right. Stop looking at me as if, if I was an idiot. Well, I'll try, but it won't be easy. Look, Harvey, why don't we forget this whole matter for just a few hours and have some dinner? I discovered a nice little Chinese restaurant near Place Pigalle. Oh, that's a marvelous idea. Well, you answer the bell. I'll book a table. All right. Oh, what's it called? Uh, I forgot. Uh, you have to look it up. It's called uh, Wong something. Wong. Uh, Wong Fu. Recognize the handwriting? Here it is. My darling, you will forgive this long silence which must have alarmed you so when you learn the reasons 
that have required it. I was so ugly, so exhausted when I was released from camp. I couldn't bring myself to come back to you, nor to ask you to come back to me. But now it's time to be sensible. If you will meet me at the Garde Vest, you will find getting off the 848 train a woman a little less attractive than I used to be, but much more elegant. I love you with all my body, all my heart, all my soul. Michel, kiss Fabi for me. I did not write his letter. I could never perfect my imitation to this extent. Look at the handwriting and the postmark. Germany. Germany. That would have been easy. You could have had it mailed from Germany. I could have, but I did not. Really, Mr. Pilgrim, I should be the one who is upset. Your wife is coming back. Your wife who loves you and who is 300 million francs richer than when she left. <laughs> what happens to my 30%? And what about this chess problem? I never taught you that one. How did you know about this? I didn't. Call it a coincidence, shall we? Would you be interested in two three quick games? 30 frames a game, five second limit of moves. How do we like my hair now? Is it the right color? Hmm? Why? Why did you do this? All these years that I waited and waited. How could you play such a horrible, sadistic trick? I can imagine the scene in that damn hotel room. All set for our big coup, and then suddenly there she is. Your long lost wife, back from the ashes. Naturally, you told her how deliriously happy you were. Naturally? Tears, incoherent expressions of love and gratitude. Maybe you even went so far as to thank God. I'm sorry to disappoint you. There were no tears and I was quite coherent. No, I do not remember thanking God. Don't laugh at me. I can you imagine how she must be laughing at you? The fool she made out of both of us, changing her hair, her clothes, teaching her her own handwriting. You deserve her. You asked to be walked on, spat on. Oh, Stan, I can't bear to think of you and her. I just, I just can't. I'm her husband. She's my wife. You have to think of it. Often. But she could never love you like I do. Never. No. But she has 300 million francs and you haven't. Come, have your bath. Fabi. Your stepmother is moving in here tonight. She's very nervous about seeing you again. I'm not asking you to fall on her neck, but you're to do nothing to show how you really feel. You understand? You must sink every emotion. Just like I must. Look. Michelle and I are opponents, and we have to deal with each other. She wanted me and she bought me. I can have all I want just by asking. Everything you want, doled out to you, frank by frank, penny by penny. Oh, Fabi, believe me, it won't take me too long to get her to sign a very large portion of that money over to me and then you and I. I don't want her money. I want you. And I want you and the money. Not necessarily in that order. You bastard. You never loved her. And you don't love me. Oh, I'm so glad. It still smells musty. Come.
Do I have to introduce you to? Mademoiselle Wolf, Mrs. Pilgrim. I must congratulate you on a brilliant performance. I deserved everything you said to me back home. Now, if you let me, I want to make it up to you. Would you like to rest? Your room is ready. Yours and Stan's. No, thank you. I'm too tired to rest. I... I don't see the Swedish vase. No, I sold it to buy the table, the lamp and the heater. You don't mind, I won't have any dinner. Are you going out? No, and I haven't got a headache. I haven't lost my appetite. I just don't want any dinner. I'm going to bed. In other words, there's nothing wrong with you, but you will be fine in the morning. Yes. You'll be better tomorrow or the day after. I hope so. You remember? Live of it. <laughs> We'll come back, Michelle. Thank you. I'll see if she needs anything. Stay in the room with her another minute. That was fairly obvious. The thought of sitting across the table from her with a chit chat about tables and vases. What makes you think it was any easier for her? Oh, I know. She was just as happy to get me out of her sight as I was to get out of hers. Oh, the feeling I looked at her was revulsion. I'm warning you, Fabi. I'm warning you. Don't do anything to spoil our plans. You know now why I hate her. Not because she was no mother to me. It's because she's taking you from me. I told you for a while. Then I could be sure you love me. Oh, you have a great deal to learn from Michelle. She would never make the mistake of asking that. Oh, Stan, let's go and tell her now. How we love each other, that we've been living together. Let's tell her the truth. You know that's not possible. That would destroy everything. You pushed me into this, and you are going to see it through. <laughs> You're more lovely now than that first night I saw you. And a man should always marry a woman with beautiful eyes. That way, there's always something to love, whatever happens. <laughs> Sometimes I think you really believe what you say. <laughs> I do. Sometimes. You have to see your lawyer tomorrow. I already did. Lots of papers to sign. Lots of money, honey. You sound as if you couldn't care less. I intend to go back to my work. What do I want with all that money? I suppose we'll find some charitable use to put it to. Sorry, I'm so late. All right. Oh, you've ordered my drink. 
Thank you, Charles. Well, are you excited about tomorrow? Terribly. My first day back at the hospital. I feel as if I just got out of medical school. Tomorrow, then. Cheers. I hear you bumped into Fabi the other day. Yes, coming out of a cinema. Oh, no, thank you. I often wonder what she does with herself. Just to make conversation, I uh, asked her, how is your mother? And she said she wouldn't have the faintest idea. How did you know? Because she wouldn't. We live in the same house. We eat at the same table. But there's no getting through to her. No way at all. I saw a good deal of Fabi in the last few years. She's, um, she's a secretive girl, doesn't talk much. I think she needs watching. Perhaps even psychiatric care, I don't know. Dr. Brada, your table is ready for you. Oh, thank you. Shall we? Charles. Charles, dear Charles. Do you mind terribly if you don't have dinner tonight? Oh, you're back? What happened to your dinner date with Charles? He stood me up. <laughs> I don't believe it. Then uh, I stood him up. Better? What happened? You look so worried. What's wrong? Stan, don't be such a fool. Don't you see she knows? Knows? Knows what? You must have known all along. I wanted you to know. I could hardly stop myself from shrieking it at you. Haven't you seen him look at me the way he never could have looked at you? Enough, Abby. If you're going to have hysterics, please have them out of my sight. You miserable coward. Why don't you tell her the truth? You already have, and so delicately. Please. I have no desire to come between lovers. And, Abby, before you attack me for my neglect, let me point out that you have already paid me back quite handsomely. Mm. Yes, isn't it marvelous? My mother did more for me dead than alive. Well, are you happy now? Don't touch me. What's the matter with you? Just don't touch me. Just leave me alone. Thank you. That's all, Nicole. Oh, Monsieur Pilgrim is here again. I told him you were busy. Once again, you may tell him I'm not busy and I will not see him. All right. Let's have it over with. Say what you have to say and then get out. I'm not here to ask you to come back. I'm here to ask you to forgive me. I'm not coming back. I'm not forgiving you. Sorry to be so negative. I must tell you, there was never any real love between Fabi and me. What I saw looked real enough. When they took you away, we were two people alone in a frightened city. We had to drift together. And when a city was no longer frightened, when I came back. You think I could go to her and tell her it's over, finished, just get out? You don't know Fabi. You have no idea of the violence in that girl. You have no idea what she's capable of doing. No, but apparently everyone else has. You, Charles. Misha, these past two weeks without you have made me realize... Don't insult me by saying you love me. I won't! 
But I feel for you what I've always felt for you. I've always needed you. I've always wanted you. Don't grovel. If I have to remember you at all, I want to remember you as Stan, the cynic, the utter, complete bastard. I promise you I won't grovel. I've been miserable without you, but I've only to look at you to see that you have been miserable too. You can't deny you weren't. Misha! I don't care what the basis of our relationship was. Maybe it wasn't perfect. But we had with very few people, right? We knew what we wanted from each other. We took it. We were happy. I won't find that kind of happiness with any other woman. She can't find it with another man. I wish you luck. No! I want you to be wretched, lonely, heartsick. Just as I am. There's no need for you to be boxed up in a hotel. It's your house. I'll move out tonight. Stan. I want to talk to you, Fabi. You don't have to tell me. Stan didn't come home last night. It's obvious you've forgiven him. Yes. I want to be your friend, Fabi. I don't want you to suffer. And Stan? Does he want to be my friend, too? Is he worried about me being unhappy, too? You'll suffer less if we are not all under the same roof. Oh. I'm to be booted out. I will see to it that you have an apartment in Paris or any place else. Stan and I are going to Copenhagen this weekend. Perhaps by then you will have found some place you like. Don't worry about me. I'll get out. I'll be glad to get out. I don't want your sympathy or your friendship or your love or anything about you. I won't stand. He doesn't love you, Bob. And if it makes you feel any better, he doesn't love me either. He doesn't love you, yet you'll take him. He's the first man in your life, Bobby. He's the last in mine. For the last few hours that I have in this house, this is still my room. Can you please leave? You may not know it now, my poor father. But in losing Stan, you're not losing very much. She's leaving. Oh? When? As soon as we get her an apartment. <laughs> Poor father. Wasn't it enough of a misfortune to get me for a mother? Did she have to fall in love with you, too? I'll be at the hospital. and flowers. How sweet of you. I haven't done that for months. Tell me about the reconciliation. Was it a night to remember? Passion, tears, more passion. 
have the coffee before it's cold. I didn't sleep last night and I refused to eat. I believe that's standard behaviour for a jilted female, isn't it? I cooked an egg for you. Three minutes. Just how you like it. Oh, clever. Very, very, very clever. If you must do something as childish as that, please don't do it over my dressing gown. How much have you have to drink? I don't know. Why don't you count the bottles? They're in the bathroom, all in a line. What do you think drinking is going to solve? Apparently nothing. I tried an experiment while you and she were making love. I was drinking. It's really no comparison. No, thank you, Grand International Chess Master. No warmed over kisses for me, thank you. Look, Stavi, nothing has changed between us. I love you as much as ever. More. We'll find a way out of this. It's just for a little while. How long is a little while? A day? A week? A year? Five years? You will have your own apartment. We still can see each other. I'll visit you. No. I'm not prepared to wait endlessly. I won't wait. I can't wait. I'm sorry. There is no other way. Yes, there is. But what's the use? You haven't got the guts. For what? All night, I was up thinking. Plan. What time does the cleaning woman get here? The cleaning woman? She's supposed to be here by 11. She's usually late. Give me half an hour. That's all I ask. Just half an hour. What for? And stay out of the living room till I call you. We'll see if you've got any guts or not. You can come in now. Shut the door. Now, what is it this time? Tomorrow morning, I tell Michelle I'm leaving immediately. The house is hers and yours. Then, the day after, Friday... Friday, Michelle and I fly to Copenhagen. No. You tell Michelle you want to go alone. This tournament is all important to you. This wretched business with Fabi has unnerved you. You feel drained. You have to be alone just this once so you can concentrate on chess. You kiss her goodbye. You tell her that you will telephone right after the tournament and let her know how you did. I see. And in Copenhagen, I'll find you waiting for me. No, not in Copenhagen. At the Hotel Royale in Saint Cloud. Saint Cloud? That's only 20 minutes from Paris. Exactly. We'll share the same bedroom, we'll get drunk at the bar, bicker, fight, I may even slap your face. Anything to make us completely conspicuous. So far, I'm completely captivated by the charm of your scheme. About midnight, you telephone Michelle. She answers. Marvellous news, but not too surprising. You've won the tournament. I will settle for a draw. You tell her that in the safe is a present for her. It's a surprise you've been planning if you won. Would she now go and get it? and open it. Now you be Michelle and go and open the safe. You know the combination. Open it. Get up, it's only a blind. <laughs> you wretched, wicked girl. <laughs> if you knew a bullet, you'd have been dead. Dead, dead! Anyone standing in front of the safe to open it couldn't possibly escape, couldn't possibly. 
In the meantime, back at the hotel, the Grand International Chess Master is listening on the other end of the telephone. You hear the shot. Obviously, Michelle will not return to the telephone. You hang up. Ring for room service. We'll order more champagne. We might even create another mild disturbance for the benefit of the neighbouring rooms. Then, early next morning, we leave the hotel. I think you'd call our alibi adequate, wouldn't you? You return here. You find your wife's body on the floor. You replace the receiver on the hook. And then, come here. You disconnect the gun. You see how uncomplicated it is? It's attached from the door to the trigger by this piece of hard thread. Now, the gun is firmly wedged between the back of the safe and the cash box. You destroy the thread. And then you place the gun beside the body in a position which suggests suicide. In a frenzy, you call the police. They arrive, not as quickly as they should, of course. The police surgeon makes his examination. Apparently suicide. The shot has been fired some nine or ten hours previously. The inspector turns to you. I'm afraid, sir, I shall have to ask you to account for your whereabouts for the past 24 hours. You break down. Accuse yourself of the moral responsibility of your wife's death. Confess to the affair with her daughter. Admit that we were going away together. And obviously... This shock coming on top of all Michelle had suffered in the concentration camp wore her down. My anguish will impress the police. And when I am questioned, I shall be half mad with remorse too at having driven my stepmother to suicide. I wouldn't be surprised if it ended with the police comforting us both. And what's the alternative? You'll just go on living with Michelle on her money. But she has the upper hand now. So you will see more and more of Michelle, but less and less of her money. The older a person gets, the stingier they get. And Michelle will get very old very soon. Pretty prospect, isn't it? Stand. It's perfect. You can't find a flaw in it. You're right. I can't find a flaw. And you're quite right about something else, too. I wouldn't have the guts. <laughs> and neither, I suppose, would I. Still, it's a marvellous dream. Her dead, you and I married, and all my lovely money piling up 6% in assorted Swiss banks. All your lovely money doled out to me franc by franc, penny by penny. Take two pills in five minutes. I'll be fast asleep. I'm such a coward. I want to be asleep when Father leaves in the morning. I can't bear to face her again. Don't worry about Fabi. The first corner she turns, there will be a man waiting. Oh, your shoulder feels so good.
Good evening, my squid. Enjoy me. Oh, God, and silly kids. I think you know what that combination can do to you. Mm. Nope. No, not the little doctor. Incidentally, do you have written permission for me to be my friend? Just fast asleep. Poor lad. If the safe should be open tonight, everything is so quiet. What if someone in the street heard the shot? That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You've been thinking. What could I have to think about it? Being the shot in the hall? How so far back from the street? Six or more. Suppose someone is with Michelle when I found him. That man? Me. <laughs> I think I could pretend I hurt someone and ask if she's alive. What is that? Great slip? And if I die? Suppose, suppose she opens the safe. What then? Silly. She hardly knows the safe exists. Well, would she think it odd then, by putting a present in the safe? Maybe. But she's a woman. She will open it. Oh, why you're asking all these questions? I'm not going to do it anyway.
You left everything as it was. The bottle of champagne, the half-empty bottle of pills. Yes, we haven't touched anything. This action of Mademoiselle Wolfe, did it surprise you? I mean, had she ever tried it before? No, never. I just cannot understand. Of course, there were times when she did get depressed. Pills and alcohol often induce a loss of memory. It could have been an accident. No, it was not an accident. It was not suicide. It was murder! I murdered Robbie. I drove her away. No love, no understanding. I wanted her out of my sight. I killed her. Darling, I killed please, Robbie. Please, Shot, I killed Robbie. I killed her. No, no, she wanted didn't. my love and no. I didn't even try please, to love darling, her. Don't blame I me, made please. her feel she had no please, place please. in her life. Go! Leave me alone! Go! <laughs> For five years, my wife suffered in a concentration camp, but now this. There's nothing we can do for poor Fabi now. It's my wife I'm worried about. I'm afraid it's sanitation. Chance. You shut up, you idiot. There, six shirts for three days. <laughs> You'll be the best groomed chess player in Brussels. I'm still not sure I want to go. Oh, come on, Stan. I know we have both been terribly depressed since... since Bob. But it's been months now. We've got to make some effort. Going back to the hospital has helped me. All you have done is mope around the house. I don't know how a tournament... All that tension. Listen, you leave for tournaments and you thrive on tension. And if you don't hurry, you are going to miss the train. I call you the minute it's over. Mm. About midnight? Will you be home? Of course. Good to miss you. <laughs> I sincerely hope so. you're so pretty, you may help me off with my coat. My 
wallet. My wallet is gone. Monsieur, I'm not a pickpocket. I'm a prostitute. Yeah, I know. No, no insinuations. I must have left it in a bar. Would you mind? I'm in no condition. I know you are not a servant, but please get down and get it. Please give me Paris. Letter 2042. It's after 12. Don't you think Stan should have called by now? I don't know. Don't know what his, his telephoning habits are. I doubt if I even care. I offered you a nightcap. You have helped yourself to at least four. That's right. <laughs> and now I think I'll make it five. And then, perhaps, I might be able to tell you what I really think. It's after 12. Don't you think you should have called by now? My God, Michelle, would you like my honest opinion of you? No. Keep your honest opinions to yourself. Well, I can't. I can't because it's taken 10 years and, and, and five drinks for me to reach this point. Now you, you pride yourself on your intelligence, your good taste. I'm intelligent enough to ask you to leave. I've stood by long enough watching you degrade yourself, debase yourself. Charles. And for what? For a louse and a cow. You are drunk and you are absolutely disgusting. Get out. I want you to if leave. If you have one shred of self-respect left. Will you get out? Left. I want you out of here this instant. Why did it take you so long to answer the telephone? What's wrong? Nothing. Are you alone? Yes, I'm alone. What's wrong? You sound so upset. Oh, no, nothing. I'm just a little nervous. Uh, I'm all right now that you're cold. How did the match come out? My opponent was clever, but I was nervous. Then you won. Yes, quite easily. Oh. Marvelous. We'll celebrate when you get back. I celebrated in advance. I bought you a present. You did? Oh, Stan, how sweet. What is it? A surprise if I won. It's a mistake. <laughs> and you said you expected to lose. Stan, may I get it and open it now? Stan, may I get it now? If you like. So do you do like it. Hang on, darling. I won't be a minute.
Mischa. 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 And when it was in the bar, it's gone now. Monsieur, I said your wallet is not in the bar. I'm sorry. I never meant that to bother you. Thank you, Monsieur. Thank you.
information? Could you give me the number of the police department? Thank you. Hello? Hello? Police department? Yes, sir. This is Stanislas Pilgrim speaking. Uh, could you come at once, please? Something terrible happened. My wife committed suicide. <laughs> Last night, just before you telephoned, Charles was here. He quarreled. Get out. I want you out of if here. If you have one shred of self-respect... Get out. I want you out of here this instant. I heard the front door close and naturally thought he'd left. I was worried about Michelle. She still blamed herself for Fabi, and I had behaved badly. I was just going back to her when you rang. If you had rung one second later, Michelle would not have been alone and she would have told you. As it was, I didn't want to intrude and decided to wait. I went to the safe to get your present, but I had forgotten the combination. I went into the study to get it. On my way back, I was surprised to find that Charles had not left. Oh, Charles, I thought you had gone. I'm sorry, Michelle. I, uh, I must have had oh, a drink too many. Oh, don't worry to apologize. Just go. Not till you've forgiven me. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm still on the phone. I left Charles in the hall and went back to the safe. I was just opening it Misha. when your voice on the Misha. phone made me turn. Misha. It was then that I saw Charles coming in. There is no God, no heaven, no hell, no immortality. Then everything is permissible. There are a few questions we're going to ask you about Mademoiselle Wolf, Fabian Wolf. At your service. Closing of a door has brought me to the guillotine. 